Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. Well, in this uh, video, I'm going to revisit the generative uh, fill tool, uh, show you how to remove lots of people. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a day tonight on this shot. As you can see here, this is the Louvre in Paris, and uh, shot this on our recent um, workshop. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get in there early hours of the morning. It was all closed off. We could only get in there uh, about nine o'clock and by which time there were a lot of people. So the original image is actually a, a panorama of five shots and uh, I will share the five five uh, DNG files with you uh, with a link below so you can download them and follow on. We're going to put the pano together. We're going to sort out the perspective on the image and uh, we're going to remove all the people. And that's what we're going to do. And then just to finish off, we'll do a little bit of day tonight um, to finish the image off. So, yeah, join me on this one. I, it's quite interesting. Uh, I do enjoy using the generative fill and the remo remove tool. Wonderful, wonderful functions that we now have in Photoshop. And if you haven't already done so, I'd love you to subscribe and join me on my adventure here on YouTube. I'm having a great time and I always appreciate a like and uh, comments and questions are always welcome. I do my best to try to answer all of them. OK, let's get started. So we're going to uh, do a six image pano of the Louvre in, uh, in Paris. And uh, I've got the six images here, uh, all, all colour coded green, so I know they're the right ones. And um, what I'm going to do is highlight all of them. So I select the first one, hold down the shift key, select the last one. And, and you'll see that we, we go from left to right as we work our way through these images. So we've got, we've got everything we need there. So we're going to, we've got them all selected. We're going to right click on the uh, film strip here on the image. We're going to go to photo merge and we're going to click on panorama. So uh, it's going to do join the six images together. It's very good at doing it. It stitches them together very well. You can never see the joints. Um, and you have three three particular projections that you can use up here. At the moment, it's in spherical. So there is a little bit of a curve. You can see running from, from sort of over here, you see that the buildings are curved as they go away from you. You can go to cylindrical. Um, so rather than curving from left to right, it, it sort of curves from top to bottom. And uh, you can see there's still a bit, a little bit of a curve in there. You can also see my good friend uh, Bill Bolsh in the bottom of the picture there. And uh, the last one that you have is perspective. There we go. It gives you the perspective shot, um, which doesn't work particularly well here because you've got this sort of big, this building at the part of the building, the Louvre here on the on the right. It sort of pulls it together. You would be able to crop this down if you wanted to. I'm actually going to consider going with cylindrical. Now there is a little bit of a curve, but what I can do is I can stretch the borders here up and down and that will straighten that line out a little bit. And you do that by using the boundary warp uh, slider here. So if I just move that up to say 25% roughly, it will start to stretch these towards the edges and it will start to undo that just a little bit. I can go further and um, I can go the whole way and let's see what that gives us. So there's still a curve there. You can still see a little bit of a curve there. Um, I'm going to come back to about 25%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, fill these edges, fill the spaces by using the fill edges check mark here. If you check that, it will actually calculate what needs to go in those areas and it will fill them in. And for sky, generally, and, and where you have clear edges to buildings, it's pretty good actually uh, to do that. So... Um, but we will need to sort out the perspective on the building over there because it is rolling ever so slightly. So I've got auto settings set at the moment. It doesn't really matter because we'll adjust the, 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 the um, settings when we go over in back into Lightroom. And the create stack, well, what that does is it puts all six images behind this image back in Lightroom. So you don't have your film strip full of six images plus the one that you, uh, you created. So I'm going to click merge. And uh, Lightroom is going to merge those those images together, and uh, just takes a few minutes for it to to work through those. And then once we've got those together, what we're going to do is we're going to process this image. Now, 
there's a lot of work to do here with remove tool and with generative fill. There's a lot of people in the, in the scene here, so we're going to have to do a little bit of work uh, to to clear up to clear up the area. Uh, but what I want to do is get the exposure correct first before we we go anywhere. So there we go. We're back. We're back in here. So and if I zoom in, we go into uh, 100 percent. Let it catch up. There we go. You can see how many people there are. The queues. And this was quite early in the morning as well. So um, we've got some work to do to certainly clear the people out in the in the in the sort of mid to foreground. Um, I think in the distance it doesn't matter too much. There's a little bit of tidying up to do there as well. Uh, and we've got to also sort out the perspective. So um but just before we go over, I just want to do um see if we can correct some of the perspective here in Lightroom so I'm just going to go back to, to fit I'm going to go down to transform we go I'm going to click auto see what it can do there we go that's actually done a pretty good job actually straightening that up uh, I might try guided as well so I'll try this uh, this street light over here center of that street light to the bottom center of that street light and one over here, we'll pick one of these ones, do the same thing, that's it, and then we'll try and make that level across there. So that's not too bad. Now I'm going to go to the crop tool, and I'm going to take my good friend out of the shot. There we go, bring this guy down just a little bit so that we've got it sort of in the center. And I'm just going to come over ever so slightly on the edge there just to take the, uh, the edge away. Hit return. That's the crop that we've got. I think I need to crop a little bit more off of this side. So I'm going to come back in there again. I'm just going to bring that, that in a little bit more. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. See if we can um, get a good crop. Now I'm going to Click on the custom. It, by the way, if if your crop has the padlock locked, you won't be able to move freely the uh, the sides as I was doing like this. You know, just individually, it would always keep shape, and that's because the lock would be on. And if the lock's on, then you're bound by the standard sort of sizes. So here, I think I'm a, probably a sixteen ten, no, maybe a sixteen nine. There we go. And when the lock's on, when you move a corner, the whole thing changes in size as we go bigger or smaller. So um, here we go. So I'm going to go with a 16.9 hit return. So that's not bad at all. Yeah, good. But I do think we're going to need to do something with this in the distance. So we'll have a look at that when we go over into Lightroom. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm just going to go back into the basics where we are here. I'm going to bring the highlights all the way down, open up the shadows all the way up um, just to try to equalize the scene a little bit. And uh, I think we're going to just check our whites. So we're going to hold down the Option or Alt key on Windows and just going to back them off so that the whites are not burning in too hard. That's it. And I'm going to go to the blacks. And just make sure we got just a little bit of black showing. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to take this over into Photoshop and uh, we're going to remove some things and we're going to sort out the perspective as well. So we're going to right click and we're going to go to edit in. Now I have my edit in function currently selected to use Adobe Photoshop beta. Uh, if you don't have it using beta, you will need that for the generative fill function. Um, then what you can do is go into your Adobe apps, click on apps here, go down to uh, beta apps and you'll find Photoshop beta and you'll be able to uh, install it from here. Once it's installed in, in, um, on a Windows machine, when you right click here to go into um, editing, you'll get two options. You'll get your existing Photoshop and you'll get Adobe Photoshop beta. If you're on an Apple, you will need to go into Lightroom Classic Preferences and then you will need to go to External Editing tab, third one along, and then you will, instead of Adobe 
Photoshop 2023, you'll have to select Photoshop Beta. And then once you've done that, when you right click here, you will have Photoshop Beta available. So I'm just going to click on that and um, we shall go over into, there we go, into Photoshop. So um, first of all, um, I think we need to try to deal with this perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to go to perspective warp. Um, now with perspective warp, you get to draw boxes on areas that you, for example, I can see that there's a change in direction taking place here. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a box here where that change of direction looks like it, it, it runs to. This looks pretty straight down to about here. So I'm going to take another box in there then it sort of drops away as you can see so we'll put another box here and then we'll do another box i think including the uh the pyramid because we don't want to uh we don't want to upset the pyramid so get that in there and um and then the last box will literally be in this corner so we've got these these sort of windows and what we now do is we, we go from layout at the top here to warp and what we can do is we can now move these these lines to um, to to change the perspective. So we want this bit over here to come upwards. Yeah. So what we can do is we can pull up. Just ever so slightly, we can pull up. And maybe over a little bit. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit just to get so we've got a straight line running through here. You see that? That's what we're trying to do. This has got to come up over here. So we're going to pull this up over this side. Not too much because I don't want to I don't want to change the angle too much. But I want a straight line running from here all the way through there, and that's what we're actually after. So I'm just going to find where that is. That's pretty good. This needs to come up a little bit over here. So I'm just going to bring this up here slightly. And I'm just going to bring this up. Just get that in the right place. That looks better. Let me bring that one down one. There we go. So I've got that sort of line pretty well straight now, happy with that. I don't need to change anything over here. So I'm just going to click the tick mark to say, yep, yeah, that's what I want you to do. And it will render that for us. So now you can see that's much better. That line's much, much straighter. OK, we, we can fill this edge if we want to. Um, we can use generative fill to fill this edge. Quite straightforward to do. If we, we go to the um, if we go to the lasso tool, L, you'll find a polygon lasso, lasso tool, which is which you can then draw straight lines. So I'm going to start at the top there. And you need to make sure you just include a little bit of the scenery as you come down and along. Um, and I'm just going to go out of range like that. Now I'm off the screen. I can literally just return back with some clicks. So I've highlighted that area. I'm just going to click Generative Fill and Generate. And that will... Uh, that will just fill in that, that gap for us um, using the AI intelligence that's available now in Photoshop. And uh, it will hopefully come up with a, a good solution. So let's see what it's come up with. There we go. It's popped that in. You do always get three options. So that's option one. So if you're looking at this area over here, that's option two. And that's option three. So I actually think option two, with the lines carrying on, is the one I'm going to go for. So I'm happy with that. So we're going to uh, say we're happy with that. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. That just helps with a little bit of feedback for Adobe. Now we do have um, we do have some um, trash bins in here. We do need to try to get rid of those as well. Now we can try and use generative fill uh, to do that. I'm going to right click and change it back to the lasso tool i'm going to zoom in use the space bar to move over and then i'm just going to go around 
this bin and um, and then we'll do the same thing we'll click generative fill and generate so we're looking to remove that from the scene now one of the things with generative fill is that um, there's only a maximum resolution that the actual fill can do and it's 10 10 24 if you ask for an area much greater than that what will happen is is you will effectively um, end up with much lower resolution it will look a bit blurry if you zoom in so let's see what it's done it's 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 taken away the bin it's put in the missing one of these which is great and it's also added another one here so let's see what option two gives us that's a strange one that gives us uh, one stood on its own and option three is another bin so I quite like option one I'm going to stick with option one and use the space bar to go across and I'm going to do the same for this bin here so we're going to go round round this bin here I'm just going to come in quite tight so that it can see that 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 other ball is there around that this one same here I'm going to come in quite tight because I want it to to see that the ball is on the outside there we're going to click generative fill and generate and we're going to ask it to do the same again which is to work out what 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 solution it should use uh, to, to get that background area so uh, let's see what it comes up with this time it does impress me I must admit some of the things that uh, that I've used it for well there's a strange there's a strange shape so we'll try option two now that works very very well you see there's one standing on its own over there which we uh, we weren't involved with and it's replaced this one completely and put one in here so that's pretty good and option three was some strange large one there so we're going to go back to that one so I'm happy with that that's that's pretty good as well so just going to move around the shot there are some bins further down we could we could try to uh, we could try to take those out so I'm just going to draw a little little line around that one generative fill generate and it will do the same again for us and hopefully it will put in the bottom of the lamp the lamp posts here uh, complete those as it does it so it is quite exciting this tool uh, I must admit I have a lot of fun there we go it's 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 done it perfectly option two is a strange thing there option yeah so it, it's kept it's kept a ball um, for us there um, strange how they, they they sort of move around I think option three was no ball there so I'm going to go with option three so um, yeah very 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 impressive so we can use a generative field to remove the people as well it, it is quite clever and we can use the remove tool um, but what what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here and what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can um, grab quite a few people across here I'm going to leave that little box in because these little lighting boxes that they have there I'm going to go around that that one there there we go so I'm using the lasso tool I'm going to go around this lady here I'm going to go up tight against the lamppost and then I'm going to come all the way back try and get as much space as I can I'm going to come down into this one here back out again and just move around so we don't want to change these things it's only the people that we want to remove so there's quite a quite an extensive um, selection so I'm going to click generative fill and click generate and it's going to have a look at see if it can remove all of these people now that used to take us a long time when we we're using the stamp tool or the remove uh, before even before the remove tool uh, where they use the healing brush and the stamp tool it was it was an awful lot of work to remove people um, when it was very busy like this there are techniques we can use for using longer exposures and stacking um, but but this tool is 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 you know really excellent at what it can do so that's option one that's option two and that's option three I quite like I think option three is the best um, there's still a few people left in there that so we can we can do the same again we can go around this person here come down here up and around the edge of this one on the lamppost there and use generative fill generate and it will uh, 
it will remove those as well. What we will do once it's done this one is we'll use the remove tool as well and I'll show you how well the remove tool works. So um, let's uh, let's give that a try as well. So let's just see what this comes up with. And yep, they're gone. So I'm just going to see option two and option three. I think option two is the best one. So I'm just going to say, yep, that's great. So we'll go over here so you can see this these people here. Let's go into uh, the remove tool. So that's under J and if you right click under the spot healing brush, you'll find the remove tool if you're in Photoshop beta at this time. Um, what I need to do is just bring all these layers together. So I've had the top one selected, held down the shift key, clicked on the bottom one. They're all they're now all uh, illum um, illuminated. So I'm just going to merge layers into one layer. Now, some people say, well, you shouldn't do that because you, you you know if you ever want to go back you've lost your history i agree but if i bring it all together as a single flat image once i'm happy with the you know the changes that i've made then i don't really need to, to have all that additional data so it does decrease the file size by changing that so we've got the remove tool we're just going to draw over the people that we want to remove and the first couple of times that the remove tool works, it has to calculate the whole scene um, and uh, it just takes a little while. But once you've used it once or twice on the same image, it, it does speed up considerably. There we go. They're gone. I'm going to take this person out here as well. So um, you can just click on that. There we go. So you see it's, it's a little bit quicker just calculating that. And then I'll do this one on this side as well. And um, it will gradually improve its speed as we go forward, removing things. So there's still something there. Just going to remove that, and uh, hopefully that will be a nice straight line now on the lamp post. That's okay. Some people over here. So we use the remove tool to just highlight those people and um, let it do its magic. To remove them and watch how it puts the wall and everything in behind absolutely incredible um, some more people here so we're just gonna go along the top of that wall on that person there and um, just highlight what it is that you want to remove rather than trying to take out huge areas just do the smallest areas you can there we go that's perfect there's some railings in here. Let's remove these railings and this bicycle. So we're just going to go around there, around the edge, and uh, make sure you fill it in. And then when you let go, it will calculate what needs to be done. Removing that railing and those railings and bicycle. Perfect job, as always. Um, so I'm just going to zoom around again. We can move over to this side. So we've got all those people over there. Um, and we've got a lot of people here. So let, let's try the remove tool on these people in the middle here with the with the pyramid behind. Can it calculate what needs to be done? Make sure you get the shadow. That's it. To rebuild the um, rebuild the pyramid, the small pyramid behind. And it does look, isn't that most most excellent? So again, I'm just going to go over these people and. Um, we will work our way through removing them from the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the video uh, whilst I just go through and take out all these people because it's going to be quite a long video otherwise. So uh, sit back for a moment and watch me remove all these people. Okay, so we've got rid of most of the people we want to get rid of. There's a few little bits of garbage around, so we're just going to go around and uh, take those out. So uh, we can use, right click, we can use the spot healing brush tool for a lot of these sort of little white paper marks and, and things like that. So uh, it can, can be a much quicker way of just uh, picking out anything that you want to uh, get rid of. So... A little bit blurry on the edge of the image there. I have to crop that out. 
There's cigarette butts. Worth getting rid of those as well. Any other little little areas of, of dirt or rubbish and uh, just tidies up. Take, stops people drawing their eyes towards it. One of the other things I do want to do is I also want to deal with the lightning conductors on top of the building. So I'm just going to take those out as well. There we go. I think there was there's a small one on there. A small one on there. I think that's the majority of them. Yep. So I think we're pretty good. So I'm just going to zoom back out to uh, to full full screen. So that's a lot tidier than it was. I'm just going to have a look in over here on the right. So there's a it's just a little bit noisy down there uh, with those bins, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. So we'll go back into fit to screen. So I think I think we're looking pretty good. I'm just going to go to the crop tool. I'm just going to bring this crop over slightly to here just to take out some of that slightly blurred edge that we've got. I might take it to there so we haven't got the pillar in the shot at all. There we go. There is just something there on the edge, so I'm just going to go to the spot healing tool there and just, just take that out. There we go. And I might take out this, this windowsill edge as well, just, just because it sort of draws your eye away. Hopefully this can deal with the pattern underneath that we got there. It's not too bad at all. So uh, I might undo that and just try that with the spot healing tool. So I'll select that instead, and then we'll draw around that one and see how well it deals with that. Can it keep that pattern in place? Let's have a look. See what it comes up with? Yeah, that's better. So we're pretty good. There's just a little bit of red in the middle there from somebody showing through on the uh, on the little pyramid. So I'm just going to take the little brush there and just... Uh, just clean out that little area there. Same with that one. And that's not quite straight. Can you see that's not quite straight there? The healing tool is very good at this, actually. You can, sorry, the remove tool. You can pull that across like this and, and say, well, that's not right. And look, it will it will correct it. So uh, same there. You see that's not quite right. So we'll just bring that down there and say, can you, can you sort that out for us? There we go. Much better. So... Um, is there anything else that needs to be done? I don't. I don't believe so. Just gonna take that one out over there. Um, I think we're in a pretty good position. So go back to fill screen. Yep, I think that looks very nice indeed. So we're going to go back into Lightroom, and we'll finish this this processing off. So I'm going to go to File, Close, and Save, and that will put it back into uh, into Lightroom. There we go. So it's now a TIFF file because it's come back from, from Photoshop and uh, we just want to have a little bit of a tidy up. Should have got rid of that drain cover whilst I was over there. Um, let's have a go with the content aware tool here. Then we'll just make a little bit of a brush there and see if we can get rid of that. A little bit blurry on the edge there. Yeah, not so good. So I'm going to take it smaller and just go along the actual line itself. There you go. That's not so bad. Okay. So what are we going to do to this scene? Well, I'm going to open up the shadows still further from where we were because we're now back in a tiff. We can go a bit more and we can also still bring the highlights down a little bit more. And um, what I'm going to do is darken the scene slightly and then we're going to light the lanterns give it a bit of a nighttime effect. So to do that, I'm going to drop the exposure down by about, uh, let's say, yeah, two stops. And uh, I'm going to um, then look at how we can relight this area. But I do want to darken the sky down as well. So I'm going to go into masks. I'm going to select the sky. Um, so I've got a sky mask. I'm going to in the sky mask there, you'll see there's three little dots. I'm going to click on that and intersect that with a linear gradient. So I can now pull a linear gradient across from the 
as such, but it, it'll it'll only affect the sky. So I'm just going to darken that down a little bit from that side. So as though the sun's still coming in from over here, and um, just want to darken that a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more blue to it. You can try adding a little bit of color. No, we'll stick with blue. A little bit of blue. That's fine. So then we're going to uh, effectively light these these lumen the, these lanterns to give us a sort of evening look really so to do that i'm going to create a new mask i'm going to go to uh, radial gradient and then i'm going to place a small radial gradient over the lantern itself and bring up the exposure to maximum add in some color a little bit of magenta just to balance it off and then what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in onto this lantern here as you can see and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract from that mask, subtract a brush. And that brush is going to have very low feather, only about 10%, very high flow, 100% flow. And because it's a minus brush, it's going to remove the, um, the radial gradient effectively from the areas you paint. So if I click once there, you see it's removed it. If I hold down the shift key and click again, I can effectively draw around this, this light fitting. Now, now I'm freehand drawing there, I'm going to click there, hold down the shift key, I'm going to click there, and then I'm going to draw freehand around the top of this lantern, because lanterns will light up in that area just above, so um, make my br brush bigger using the square brackets to the left of the return key, and I'm just going to paint the rest of that radial gradient out, there we go. Now, the real trick is we need to make sure we get some sort of masking on the on the struts. So I'm just going to reduce the flow down to about 40%, make my brush smaller. So it's just the size of that. And click once, and then hold shift click again. So we can just bring that down. And I'm just going to paint this one freehand through here as well. And we do just need to darken this down. So because we're, we're at a lower 40%, we can... Uh, just bring that area down in brightness just a little bit that's good now we're going to click on that radial gradient again we're going to right click we're going to duplicate the mask not the radial gradient the mask because we want to keep all the masking in place they might think well wow that, that doesn't look very good Jamie well what we do is we click on the new one because we've now got two on top of each other and we make this one smaller so we make this one the size of the lamp inside the light fitting and I'm just going to back off the brightness just a little bit. So effectively, the light bulb is now illuminated in the center. So if I go back to uh, to the full screen, and I come out of masks, you'll see that that lantern is now, now perfectly illuminated. So we do need to put a spread of light underneath it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into mask, create a mask, radial gradient, and then we're going to pull quite a large mask out and we need to put the center of the light at the bottom of the fitting and um, we've got to sort of choose which way we want it to illuminate so I'm going to put it out that way um, and then I'm going to bring up the brightness as you see when you bring up the brightness and some color there we go and a little bit magenta to balance that color off you see how that that sort of looks quite authentic I'm just going to bring that round a little bit there just so it feels a little bit better now really important that when you do do a light source lighting an area like this you do need to make sure that you include contrast a little bit of contrast there we go and most importantly of all clarity so watch this area here what we'll do is we'll add clarity and you see how you see how that picks up the light it's, it's, it's really good i'm not going to go too high i'm probably going to go around about 40 and that gives us the light spread that we're we're actually after so um We'll, we'll, what we do need to do is we will need to illuminate all of the lamps here uh, to get this effect going away. Um, so I will need to do that, but using the same process that you've just seen there. Sometimes the fitting might have a little bit of a glow around it. If you want to put a little bit of glow around it, well, click on, click on the, uh, the previous mask. And, um, and then what we'll do is we'll right click and duplicate that mask again. So we've now got three on top of each other. And now what you can do is you can take out the, the radial gradient as a circle 
okay apologies I'm not going to do it that way delete the mask so what you can do is you can create another radial gradient and you can put that like quite large over, over the fitting itself and then you can increase the dehaze so if you go down to dehaze you can you can increase the dehaze here and you can create like a hazy effect around the lamp. You could probably make that a little bit smaller. So if you wanted to, you could you could dehaze it and that would make it look a little bit more uh, authentic. Or you can just go straight forward and add more exposure and um, add a bit more color and then you can get a glow around the lamp as well. Sometimes that works, but you have to watch the background um, that you don't end up lighting the uh, the background unnecessarily so I pr personally prefer not to do that I tend to just fit, do the fitting and um, and and the flood of light that comes from that so um, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the video again and I'm going to go through and light these lanterns um, as you uh, as you can see them here so same process and uh, we're going to create a radial gradient and off we go And what you'll see with the last the last uh, few lanterns here is I've just taken one radial gradient across all of them just to sort of light them up in a line because once you get that far away the detail doesn't need to be that clear you're not you're not going to see it so if I go back to here come out of there you'll see that they all combine together just need to add some lighting underneath these light fittings here so we'll go back into um, mask take a, a gradient and then we can always take a slightly a bigger one, just covering those areas of those lights. I'm just going to come this way a little bit, and then just boost that up. As you can see, we can add a little bit of colour to it. A little bit of magenta balances it off. That works really, really well. So um, let me just come out of masks. So there's a sort of day to night done quickly but it was mainly to show you how to remove people from a quite a complicated busy scene using the generative field tool and also um, using the uh, the remove tool as well which is an exceptionally good uh, piece of equipment I'm just going to finish this off with a couple of quick cheap um, quick uh, tricks here we're just going to take quite a large radial gradient up here just in that part there we're just going to stretch that across as though the sun is is coming in from over there and we're just going to boost that exposure just a little bit add some contrast to it and uh, bring the highlights down just a little bit and i might even pop in a little bit of clarity over there just to sort of make that that sh that stand out a little bit and uh, i will want to darken the corners down with a, a vignette but at this corner i want to stay bright so to do that i'm literally going to create a new linear gradient and just pull them in from the from the bottom like that and then you can just drop away the exposure slightly same with this top corner up here create a linear gradient just pull that in from that top corner up there just drop that down a little bit more as well and then one in this bottom left corner create a linear gradient there just to pop there and then just drop that down slightly and I just want to open the center up a little bit more so I'm going to create another radial gradient just to go in the center there just going to boost that there we go add a little bit of contrast to that not too much about 10 9 yeah and then add in some clarity just to make that pop a little bit in the center there so it gives us a a little burst of color and light i'm just going to make that slightly bigger and we're going to add we are going to add in a little bit of warmth into the center of that shot there with a little bit of magenta just to balance it off and um, yeah, there we go. So I'm happy with that. Just have a look at that in the full. Um, so that's that's 
where we uh, where we got to. It's a little bit of a mark at the top there. Let's just deal with that very quickly. Just crop it down slightly, just below that mark. Then there we go. So I think that works. That works very very well. Got some lights on. That looks quite nice. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like it like and subscribe that would be wonderful you have if you haven't already done so uh love your comments uh, love your questions this was just a quick one just to show you uh, how to remove those people lots of people and we'll do a little bit of day tonight there just to bring the image alive a little bit so um yeah until the next time bye bye for now